Hello and welcome to another standard game to video. Today we're taking a look at another 5 color Invasion of Alara deck, although this one's not going to combo with Bramble Familiar. Instead, this deck is centered around the Discover mechanic as well, and the eventual goal is to give the entire team haste to immediately attack with a bunch of different creatures, potentially transforming Invasion of Alara in the same turn we played it. And that can of course be quite powerful if we get to awaken the Maelstrom, draw two cards, destroy one of the opponent's cards, we get to copy one of our permanents and get a few additional plus one plus one counters so that can often take over the game and then we also have Quintorius as another discover card that will potentially enable its passive whenever we cast a spell from exile and then we get to deal two damage to each opponent and gain two life so that can also add up Quintorius can also make three two spirit tokens but we're often interested in using the discover four mechanic and then the reason we're guaranteed to find one of our haste enablers is because of the way the deck is built we have a leyline binding which we can cast early thanks to our various trial lands enabling domain but it's still a six drop so we're not gonna discover into it then at two mana we could discard a hurt migration to fix our colors and gain a bit of life back but once again this is a seven drop that can also maybe make some beast tokens in the late game and then at three mana we could potentially channel a greater tanuki to help us ramp and fix our colors to maybe set up a turn four invasion of alara and then later in the game we could also cast the six mana six five if we draw it instead and then a Trumpeting Carnosaur can also be discarded for two and a red to deal three damage to a creature or planeswalker, or we can potentially cast the six mana seven six Trampler, which then also launches Discover five, so that can also maybe hit an Invasion of Alara, can hit a Quintorius, or maybe kind of in between the Geological Appraiser, which when it enters launches Discover three, which is then guaranteed to either find Imodain's Recruiter, or we could find our one-off Angel Fire Ignition, which can give a creature two plus one counters, Vigilance Trample a lifelink indestructible and haste until end of turn so that can also give an individual creature haste and then we can also flash it back and then a recruiter if we find it off our invasion of alara we actually have the flexibility of also casting the adventure half of the card similar to how the combo works with the fetch quest from brambles familiar and then in this case we get to make a pair of knight tokens but we're often more interested in just playing the creature half which is a 2-2 giving our team plus one power and haste until end of turn that way we can hopefully immediately attack with appraiser maybe that we found and then a recruiter to transform invasion of alara since we'll have exactly seven power to transform it and then as we mentioned there's Quintorius as well as another card to kind of set off the chain of discover cards maybe hit an appraiser first which will then hit recruiter dealing damage with the passive in the meantime and then as another curve topper we have one cami war since we're playing all five colors we might as well since we're also ramping into it with our greater tanuki and then of course Carnosaur is also just totally fine to hard cast in this deck since it could hit our various five drops or just appraiser into a recruiter which is also quite powerful and then our mana base, as we mentioned, has quite a few tri lanes, which we'll need to play early to enable Domain to cast a cheap Leyline Binding, but also to fix our colors since we're trying to cast the Invasion of Alara on curve. So we need lots of tri lanes to fix our colors. We also need double red if we want to cast a Geological Appraiser in a timely fashion. So we're definitely skewed towards the red tri lanes. And then a few more dual lands here to make sure we can uh, curve out. And hopefully we have a few untapped lands as well, which is why we have these pain lands, Corpulsion Forest and Battlefield Forge. So we can still maybe set up a turn to hurt migration so we don't have all tap lands. And then we've got one of each basic since we'll need to search those up with both Greater Tanuki and Hurt Migration. Don't want to play two of the same basics since if we draw two of them we wouldn't be able to cast our Invasion of Alara on curve. So that's also important. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, and we've got good mana, a little bit of interaction with binding, but then the rest of our hand is pretty bad since we've got two of our kind of uh, cards we want to discover into and not necessarily have in hand. So I think this is a mulligan. Okay, this is better. Turn three, ramp with Tanuki, and then go for Quintorius if we draw land. I think we got to believe that we draw another land by then. And then we want to lead with Headquarters. That way if we top deck a Leyline Binding we can already cast it by playing a Lounge. Alright, case in point. And against Mono Red Aggro we definitely want that early interaction. Another Swiss Spear. And 
yeah, looks like we baited them into using a monstrous rage. That's why quickly passing priority is important. Still take two. And at the very least we'll be able to cast the appraiser next turn. Could also, of course, discard Carnosaur. But I think we'll be better off channeling Tanuki. And then I need to get a mountain to cast appraiser. But ideally we just draw an untapped land for Quintorius. Another monstrous rage. Well, they're definitely tempting me to channel Carnosaur. Problem now is if our opponent has another one mana spell, they can enable Prowess once again and uh, Swiss Pier survives. I think we still have to try it since this is a bit too much damage otherwise. That worked. Okay, and then just gonna go for Tanuki here. So we successfully managed to fend off two Swiss Spears with Monstrous Rage. A Lightning Strike puts us to 12. And get Mountain. Okay, Appraiser it is. Finding a Recruiter. And I think we attack with both. I could leave one creature back, but at 12 life, we might be able to outrace our opponent with another recruiter and binding coming up. Phoenix check, not too scary. All right, just recruiter for days. And our opponent explodes. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a decent hand. Headquarters sets up turn 2 Binding, turn 3 Tanuki, and then we just need an untapped land for turn 4 Invasion. Opponent on a blue-white, kind of artifact aggro deck from the looks of it. So they might have some counter spells. For now a Schooner, which I'm happy to bind. And Proving Ground should set up the 1 mana Binding. So yeah, we've got everything lined up for a turn for Invasion of Alara. Unctus, okay, nice. Good synergy with the Schooner as well. I think we still just exile the Schooner itself. And then hope our opponent taps out next turn. And then what color do we get with Tanuki? Should be fine getting a mountain. Spyglass Siren's fine. Okay, so seems like the coast is clear for Invasion of Alara. Opponent currently only with one blocker to get in the way. Although they might have something else second main. Let's give it a shot. That resolves. Possible they have one mana interaction here. And then we want appraiser. Even though with Recruiter we would get to cast the Adventure half and make a pair of Knights. This way we maybe force the opponent to Chum Block. And then next turn Carnosaur is coming up. So that's another nice hit. So our opponent Chumps. Still at 12 life, which is relatively safe. And then next turn we've got a few options, including casting a Recruiter or Carnosaur. Okay, is that a Glyph is pretty good, so we're taking at least 10. Pretty good alongside Unctus as well. Okay, so Carnosaur seems like our best option here. A 
its recruiter and uh, yeah, we'll give the team haste. So Carnosaur by itself can transform Invasion of Alara. So we can send Carnosaur here and then just Appraiser going face, keeping a couple recruiters back. Seems decent. Is there a better option? Let's say we send three small creatures at Invasion. Opponent can eat one of them. Still transform it. Opponent takes eight instead of four, but then we don't have as many blockers back. This seems okay. So we want to draw two. And then... Let's see, if we destroy the Glyph, opponent does get to discover three. Possible destroying Ginger Brute is better, since this is an evasive attacker that can... Still get past our creatures since Recruiter, I guess, does it inherently have haste? It's only until end of turn. So yeah, it doesn't actually block the Ginger Brute. Unctus, they could easily have a backup. And if we destroy Glyph and our opponent gets another Ginger Brute, we could just lose. And I guess what we can do is copy Leyline Binding to exile the Glyph instead, so it doesn't trigger Discover. Or we can uh, copy Carnosaur which will be pretty effective too. I think the safest place still Leyline Binding. And then we can pump these up. And since we exile Glyph, it doesn't go to the graveyard. So it doesn't trigger. All right, it's a pretty good turn. Still have another one mana binding available and can gain a bit of life with herd migration. Okay, Retrofitter can animate the uh, map once again. Double block seems fine. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play and our hand's a little slow to get going with a lot of tapped lands. But uh, we should be able to get up to Invasion with... Herd Migration, finding an extra basic, Tanuki for a bit of ramp. Best case scenario, we actually draw an untapped lane so we can channel Tanuki on turn 3 and then turn 4, Invasion of Alara. Up against green-white enchantments. So with Proving Ground we have access to a 1 mana Leyline Binding, which can try to slow the opponent down a little bit. We do see Boseju, which could be relevant as an answer to Binding. Picked up a Battlefield Forge, so that'll let us channel Tanuki. So we just need one more untapped land for a turn 4 Invasion of Alara. If not, we'll get there through Herd Migration. So for now, Generous Visitor. Opponent played out the Boseju. So next turn, our opponent somewhat likely to play Calyx, since it didn't have a more impactful 2-mana play. So it could save Binding for Calyx, but then we're not channeling Tanuki, could still of course then discard Hurt Migration. So I don't think I Binding the Visitor, but I will play the Untapped Lands to let me both Binding and discard Hurt Migration. If our opponent doesn't make an impactful play, then we can of course just uh, channel Tanuki. Goes for a Naturalist, which is fine. Not the end of the world, so I'll hang on to the Leyline Binding. And then, what color do we want to get? So it's not red or white, in case we draw another one of them. Islands could be okay, we already have double red. Sure. Okay, so can go for Appraiser now. And then next turn, set up our Invasion of Alara. Get in for five. And then Garden should set it up next turn. 
And that way we also have double reds without costing me any life from Battlefield Forge in case I need to cast another appraiser. And there's Calyx. Thanks to the discount from Naturalist, so they might have had it in hand last turn, but just missing the land. Count from Naturalist. And an attack. I'm okay with the trade. Their opponent hangs back. And now we can actually Binding and Invasion. And let me just uh, do this so we don't tap uh, our white mana. Definitely Appraiser. And a Recruiter. Okay, so if we... Leyline Binding the Naturalists, as an example here, and attack the invasion with everyone. Then our opponent has to block with both of their creatures, so that seems worthwhile. And this way they don't gain any life. And if they let us transform it, we can destroy Calyx as well, or even a land. So expect them to trade for both creatures. And then, as the dust settles, we've got a recruiter left. Okay, never mind. Pono lets it transform. I guess that's option B. So we want to draw to destroy. Calyx is the safest option, even though destroying the land is somewhat tempting. Our opponent could still potentially go off with Audacity. And then... I guess we also get to copy Leyline Binding if we really wanted to. So maybe destroying the land was fine after all. Okay. I guess we just deal with all their creatures. Can be bad. Next turn we have Herd Migration as an option, or better yet, maybe just cast Recruiter and Flashback Ignition. And our opponent explodes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. This hand's quite poor since we don't have any basic types for binding. So we're going migration to get a basic land. Yeah, this feels a bit clunky. Alright, this is better. Can cast binding on turn two. Then we want a tanuki and then keep Carnosaur as something we can actually ramp into. And then we'll keep double red. Officer of Battlefield Forge, so red-white aggro. Okay, now an invasion of Alara is exciting. Regretting keeping Carnosaur over the untapped land now a little bit. And initiate, so that can also destroy our enchantments potentially. Wait and see what we need to lay line binding. Adeline, alright, that uh, is going to be our target now. And then I might be better off using Carnosaur to destroy Initiates. It cannot possibly uh, use the ability to destroy my enchantment. Although it's not going to be able to train next turn, as far as we know. And we did now find the untapped land. So play the Swamp. Tanuki gets Islands. Could work. And then next turn Invasion of Alara, hopefully transforming it. And get lost to get Adlin back. Fair enough. So now the problem is they'll have an Adlin on defense, which blocks our plan of uh, transforming invasion pretty well. So do we kind of pivot and use Carnosaur on initiate here? Opponent still is going to hit us for three. And then next turn I don't have a great play lined up. If I Tanuki and next turn go Quintorius, make a spirit, still doesn't line up great against Adlin. So discover four, and then hope that we hit a recruiter would maybe be the play. I think we still Tanuki into invasion here. And then hope for the best. Could also go for Mountain, does that work? Then we have Double Red, that doesn't cost me life. 
Uh, we might be missing either island or planes, so yeah, it's gonna be island. Okay, one mana binding. That's interesting. So now I do have the option of Carnosaur and Binding. Take out the Initiate Axel Adlin again. And then try to set up the Invasion of Alara. Yeah, I think I prefer that over an Invasion that isn't going to transform since a Recruiter doesn't really attack into Adlin. Opponent's not animating the Bivouac, at least not yet. So... Bind Adlin, step one. And then initiates not training, so we don't have to Carnosaur. But uh, I'll go for it now. I guess it's possible they have a pump spell in red. But it doesn't seem super likely. They can activate Officer if they'd like, but that's fine by me. Alright, time for Invasion. And if we could transform it right away, that's great. They could maybe block with Bivouac, or they might have another Get Lost in hand. Which could also destroy the uh, Leyline Binding, I suppose. So we hit a Recruiter, which by itself is not going to transform Invasion of Alara. So instead I think we're going for the Adventure to make a pair of Tutus. And then next turn, we've got a few options, including Quintorius. Okay, opponent is just activating Officer. So we're not dead on board as far as we know. Even with Bivouac animating. Inti can potentially help out. And another Adlin was to be expected. And Vanguard. So we're not dead yet. And double trade, but it's not looking good. Yeah, we can cast Quintorius, minus hoping to hit Geological Appraiser into, I guess, um, our sorcery would be better than Recruiter, perhaps. So we can actually attack past Adlin and gain some life back. I think that's our best bet at this point. And I guess we could also explore once. Come on, appraiser. Okay, step one. And how about some lifelink here? Just hit another recruiter instead. So not quite what we were hoping for. At least Quintorius still gains us some life back. And appraiser can attack, although... If it's only 4 damage to the invasion, our opponent can just let it happen. So I might be better off hanging back. And then... The opponent can animate Bivouac to put a counter on Adlin, up to 5 toughness. So I think I'm better off... Maybe exploring onto the Recruiter, but... I guess if they don't go for the Bivouac line... This way I would have a 4-powered creature, potentially. And then I'll go for Cascade so we can explore again. Yeah, because what happens if I get this to 4 power so they both can attack Invasion, then our opponent will block. But if they trade for Vanguard, I'm pretty sure we die to the Bivouac next turn. So that's not good enough. Alright, another land. So it's not going to be pretty here, could just die. But at least we still have a fighting chance. ENT to give Adlin tramples, pretty effective. And that should just kill us because of the Vanguard pumping the 1-1s. One yeah, if we double block Adlin, we take 6 plus more trample. So... Yeah, there's no way we can live to tell the tale. GG's. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and we've got a nice hand. 
Missing one of our better payoffs, but appraiser for starters isn't bad. So garden. Next turn headquarters. Still doesn't allow a one mana binding since we're missing swamp. So there's an argument for just herd migration on two. Sure. And then we can get our swamp. Next turn Tanuki is an option. And then there's an argument for fetching up an island here, so that if we top deck Invasion of Alara we can actually cast it next turn with another Carpluzan Forest. Don't think we deal with Lord Skitter. There's probably scarier creatures we can come across. Say so I'll get an island. Another binding. Okay, so we can go appraiser, keep up leyline binding, or we can just go for Quintorius. If I plus make a uh, token, then even if they destroy it, they can only deal four damage to Quintorius, which is not enough to kill it. And then next turn we get more value from appraiser, discovering with Quintorius in play. So that's an option, or we can just kind of control the board. And since we have double binding, I think I prefer that. Keep Lord Skitter in check. And then for now, get rid of Lord Skitter, cast the Appraiser, and attack. Could have kept the binding to see what else the opponent does, and for now just kind of offer the trade. But, uh... Would have had to tap manually, so this was a lazy solution. So can I expect removal on the appraiser, Liliana, pretty nice answer. But at least with Quintorius we can take out Liliana, assuming there's no one mana removal. Well, it kind of feels like there might be, actually. So yeah, what happens if we discover, hit a recruiter, opponent's got a cut down. We also lose Quintorius to the right token. So I actually prefer just plussing. Even though we might lose Quintorius to an Edict. And then actually keep Headquarters in hand to discard to a Liliana, I think. Even though I only have the one white source, so I wouldn't be able to double binding next turn. Yeah, maybe we still play it then. And then one binding can go. Opponent did have the cutdown. So yeah, it could have been pretty bad if we hit a recruiter. If we hit an appraiser, then at least we had two hasty creatures to attack Liliana. Okay, opponent's got the discard spell, so they can empty us out. But at least we still have a Quintorius for now. Discarding the deepest betrayal. So they might have another one in hand. And Binding is one of the better answers since it would exile the god. Appraiser's nice. So what's the best sequencing now? Maybe just make a spirit and then cast the Appraiser. Or guarantee to hit a recruiter. Quintorius triggers. And at this point, I could just go face. Because if I attack Liliana, what happens? Opponent just takes out the creature that's attacking Liliana. I guess that's fine. Just send the smallest one. These go face. So opponent takes out Recruiter now instead of our four power creature. Takes eight. They could animate Restless Reef and then finish off Quintorius next turn. But we do have an Angel Fire Ignition to push more damage. If they do have two mana removal, what happens? Then... 
Yeah, they get to minus Liliana, take out my creature, but we kind of suspect them to have another Deepest Betrayal. So I do want to try and get them low so we can try and finish them off with Ignition. So I'll try this. A Vortex to bounce our token. Alright, so at least Liliana down. So do we see the Deepest Betrayal? So they're not activating the creature lane to finish off Quintorius. And there's the Deepest Betrayal. Okay, Invasion of Alara. Probably better than Ignition here. And then, let's see. Does that trigger Quintorius? I think it does. So that's going to drain them for two. We're going to hit another Haste creature at the very least. So I might want to make a token with Quintorius, or we could discover, which I guess we'll also do it here, since we'll find once again another recruiter. Alright, Appraiser is probably better. So we get to trigger Quintorius twice. I guess we're not going to have many recruiters left in the deck at this rate. Do we have any left? Yeah, we should. So we can discover once again. And uh, it looks like we might just get there with Quintorius triggers. And that's our final recruiter. So a bit of damage to spare. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a pretty clunky hand. Can't even binding on turn 2, can't be guaranteed a turn 3 Tanuki. So I'll take my mulligan. This feels a bit better. Get rid of Ignition, which I would rather have in my deck. And then I still won't be able to Leyline Binding next turn since we're missing Forest. But uh, still play the Rafine's Tower in case we do. Opponent on perhaps a Cave deck. Okay, there's our green mana. So now we do have a one mana binding available. And we also have double red for Appraiser. Could see a Spelunking here to help them ramp. Herd Migration can get another basic. Do we have a strong preference? Not really. Put on fixing their colors, perhaps, getting a planes. And now with the monument, their caves make all colors. Spelunker X equals 3 is acceptable. Don't think we need to binding it. And there we see some of the cave payoffs, leech, bat, colony. All going to the graveyard, apparently. And a Sunfall as well. They do have a 4-4 remaining. So there is an argument for Bind, Spelunker, then next turn cast Appraiser. Problem with that line is that we're not guaranteed Invasion of Alara, which might have higher upside. And it's possible our opponent's holding a Sweeper anyway. So I'll just try this line of play. And then I could just pass with Binding up. That way there's a chance I can immediately transform Invasion of Alara by removing their only blocker. As opposed to Appraiser which hits Recruiter and then I guess Appraiser can attack. Yeah, that's maybe still okay. We'll uh, see how this plays out. Could see the 5 mana ramp spell for Caves. For now just an attack for 4. Also have to watch out for the Cavernous Maw, which is active. And yeah, there's a Confluence. So... The coast is clear for Invasion of Alara to transform. Assuming we hit Appraiser into Recruiter, which with two Appraisers in hand is not super likely. Opponent getting all the Cavernous Maws. Okay, let's hope for the best. I 
All right, hit the appraiser. And then now we're guaranteed a recruiter. That transforms. Get to draw to destroy cavernous maw or forgotten monuments could maybe mess with their mana. Yeah, I guess that's probably more relevant than destroying one of three cavernous maws. And then I can give myself an extra land or an extra appraiser. Binding doesn't do anything. I guess I'll take the land in that case. Okay, not a bad turn. All from casting one spell. And then now we've got a full grip, can cast a Carnosaur. There's a Sunfall, which we suspected. Opponent can animate the Incubator as well. And there's another Invasion. So there's only one Appraiser left in the deck. If we hit double recruiter, it's not the best. So what if we just cast either Quintorius or Carnosaur? Quintorius I can protect with Leyline Binding. Although never mind, I guess we don't have double white. Maybe should have copied Rafine's Tower last turn. Yeah, let's go for Carnosaur then. And hit an invasion of Alara, that's the best case scenario. Why just cast an invasion when you can also get a free Carnosaur? And then Appraiser is still gonna hit another Recruiter here. So we're going off. Don't really expect any interaction from the opponents, but we do have to keep the incubator in mind. So if we want to transform invasion once again, I have to send more than Carnosaur at it. If our opponent has another Sunfall, I think we can deal with it. So we draw two, destroy, let's go for maybe their second white source. So they might not be able to cast the Sunfall. This time I'll copy, I think, a land over Carnosaur, since, again, a sweeper is somewhat likely and we seem to have enough pressure in play. Still get to play a land for turn and even have to discard to hand size. Um, drawing all these recruiters actually bad since we may not have any left in the deck to combo off. So Praiser is a lot less exciting now. Opponent did have another monument to fix their colors. Still can uh, potentially cast one of our creatures and then Ignition or Recruiter afterwards. Can go for the adventure and then cast a recruiter. Have the mana for it now. So we're doing okay, but the game's not over yet, despite transforming two invasions of Alara. I guess there's a world where we can ultimate Quintorius as well to burn them out with a passive, so we don't necessarily need to attack with creatures to win the game. The leech we can remove with our Leyline Binding. And our opponent keeps up a few cavernous moss, perhaps. Okay, so what are we thinking? Bind the Leech, and then a little bit short of Adventure and Cast Recruiter. So instead we might want to get Quintorius going. Play Quintorius Binding, and that would be it. So it's not the most efficient turn. Could transform another Invasion of Alara. I guess that's never a bad idea. Or Carnosaur at this point is pretty likely to find another Invasion, since we don't have many other cards left. Of 
Quintorius would also be a fine hit. Okay, so Quintorius is just going to plus. Since we don't have any haste enablers left in the deck. And bind the leech and attack. Opponent takes it. They keep looking at the graveyard. Maybe they have a way to get uh, cards back. I see. Visionary, get back, Sunfall and Leech. So they can wipe the board with Sunfall. Play a Leech. And yeah, we kind of want another Leyline Binding to deal with the Leech and then attack with our hasty creatures. 5-5 five, five Lifelink is not bad on this board. Now I suppose we can also go for the Ignition. So yeah, Quintorius doesn't actually discover anything anymore. There's just nothing left in the deck for it to hit, which is pretty interesting. So it's going to plus. Invasion also doesn't find anything else. I guess we just cast Tanuki and Ignition it. They could trump with a 4-4 to survive. They could animate Cavernous Maw. But we'll still trample for 5, so... I guess they're double blocking, we get to take out both creatures. So in that case they were maybe better off animating the 4-4 and double blocking 5-5 five, five and 4-4 four, four to soak up all the trample. Opponent reconsiders, trumps with a leech, and is still at 7. And a Virtue of Loyalty makes a Knight. So they can animate their creature lanes to pressure Quintorius. But we've got some decent blockers available. Another Leech isn't bad. So this flashback to Ignition is going to be pretty important to once again set up a good attack. And then Quintorius could minus 6. Can play another Quintorius. Yeah, that might get the job done actually. Just making a ton of mana and then casting all those spells from exile to enable the passive. So it's going to be a pretty unique way to end the game. Opponent maximizing their virtue of loyalty in the meantime. Okay, let's go for it. So we just want to make as much red mana as possible. And then play another Quintorius before we continue. Okay, and then uh, again we're not going to be able to discover anything, but just casting these is pretty effective. So Appraiser finds nothing. Can cast another Appraiser. And then Ignition. Is going to be another 2 damage here. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. Finally got to pull off a Quintorius ultimate. Okay, we're on the play. And our hand seems decent. Recruiter itself, not ideal to have in hand. But uh, even as a 6 card hand, this is pretty effective. Let's see what we're up against. Turn on Mountain Phoenix Chick. Out of all the one drops, probably the least scary one. And another Binding was a good draw. So yeah, against Monoret, this is a good hand. I'm gonna gladly deal with any two drop. Opponent's actually playing black as well. I see, so maybe they have a combo with Cacophony Scamp. Yeah, I'll uh, get rid of the Scamp in that case. Suppose we could wait and see if they go for a pump spell. Still want to use my mana efficiently. And 
than migration. Now that we drew the mountain, I guess islands or forests are fine. And then I'll hang on to binding for next turn. Okay, can cast a recruiter if we'd like. Opponent's got a crescendo on Phoenix Chick. That's acceptable. They get to draw an extra card, but they don't get to deal any extra damage. Could have used Binding and Response just to deny that extra card, but I would rather keep this in case, like, a Godric shows up. For now, another Phoenix Jake gets counter from Kumano. And a Scamp. Okay, so I think we take it, and then if we bind the Scamp, we are pretty likely to transform the Invasion of Alara, which should help us win the game. Otherwise, Scamp could potentially get in the way. Quintorius is also a nice source of life gain. It's an option, although we are unlikely to untap with it. If I minus 3, if I plus 1 at 5 loyalty, it's still going to be under pressure from their flyers. Let's just uh, go for the invasion. And then hoping to hit an appraiser before another recruiter. There we go. If we did select the recruiter, we could have also trained troops to make a pair of tutus. But I want to give the team haste here. And then I suppose if our opponent has removal, they can prevent the transformation. And then it would still deal 6 damage to it. And alright, our opponent sees the writing on the wall and concedes. Alright, so we go to see our Discover Alara deck in action, and of course the deck's awesome whenever we get to cast the Invasion and immediately transform it, which happens relatively frequently whenever we cast the Invasion, or maybe even discover into it with a Carnosaur. Now that being said, the deck's also gonna have some clunky draws being a 5-color deck, so we will get punished quite often by having all these colors and not necessarily having the most untapped lands, since we also need the tri lands to both fix our colors and enable domain, so there's a lot going on, but it's quite reminiscent of course of the Bramble Familiar version of the Invasion deck. This one is a bit less combo-centric in the sense that we don't need Invasion for the deck to work, but whenever we actually find Invasion of Lara, the deck looks a lot better than if we don't. So it's an interesting new take on kind of the Discover and Invasion decks, but I'm not sure if it's the best one necessarily. I've also had a lot of fun with the Bramble Familiar builds, which now get updated with the Carnosaur as well. Can also go for a more combo-centric approach built around the Carnosaur itself, maybe even foregoing Invasion of Alara, and then there's other ways you can give the entire team haste to maybe just win in one turn as opposed to just going for Recruiter to transform the invasion. So there's a lot of ways we can build these various Discover decks, but this is a pretty valid approach nonetheless. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day!